Donald Trump wrapping up a speech moments ago in Iowa. It is the first time he's spoken since he announced he is a target of special counsel Jack Smith's probe into his efforts to overturn the 2020 election. And he said this as Trump faces a third possible indictment. We have a man, the only way he can get elected is to weaponize the Justice Department, which he's gone around doing. Uh, I didn't know practically what a subpoena was and grand juries and all of this. Now I'm like becoming an expert. I have no choice because we have to. It's a disgrace. Uh, if you say something about an election, they want to put you in jail for the rest of your life. We have prosecutors that are evil people. These are evil people. Deranged. I call them deranged. Trump's remarks just hours after he scrambled to call top allies on Capitol Hill, including the House Speaker Kevin McCarthy and the House GOP Conference Chair Elise Stefanik, to strategize. Kristen Holmes is out front. So, uh, Kristen, you're you know you know what's happening here in, in who Trump's talking to, what they're saying. What are what are you learning about Trump's strategy here? Well, look, there's always going to be two strategies in theory, the political strategy and the legal strategy. But as we continue down this path with more and more of these legal issues, more and more of these indictments, they really start to merge together. And that's what you just saw there in those unannounced remarks. He stopped by the Lynn County Republican Party. Small group was gathered there to cheer him on. These are people who support him, who knew he was coming. Uh, and he talks about how deranged this is. Mm. This is part of their election strategy because they are going to continue to paint this as as a witch hunt and a hoax. And that is when you start to see these two strategies merge. We know the former president likes to play things out in the court of public opinion, and that is what he is going to continue to do, and that is what his team is going to continue to do. Now, we do also know, because we saw those FEC filings from the campaign, those finance reports last week, that the strategy of essentially fundraising off of these indictments is working for the former president. The number, uh, the numbers don't lie. They show an enormous amount of money in the last quarter, more than the first quarter, um, more after the indictments and those arraignments. And that is what his team is banking on. Again, hmm. they also saw those poll numbers as well, maintaining those poll numbers, not going down. However, I do want to note one thing. I have talked to several allies who say that while this might give him a boost right now, this is completely unprecedented, as we know, and it is unclear what this looks like in the long run. All right, Kristen, thank you very much. And I want to go now to the Republican governor of New Hampshire, Chris Sununu. And, Governor, I really appreciate your time. So here, here's where we are this moment, and things could change a lot over the next few days, right? But uh, two uh, indictments for Trump this year so far, the third may be imminent. One of his Republican rivals for President Asa Hutchinson today, Governor, said, and I quote uh, the governor, I have said from the beginning that Donald Trump's actions on January 6th should disqualify him from ever being president again. Anyone who truly loves this country and is willing to put the country over themselves would suspend their campaign for president of the United States immediately. Uh, do you agree, Governor, and is an indictment in the January 6th probe, as we anticipate there may be one in the next two days, disqualifying? Uh, it, it should be, but it, but it's just not. He's not going to get out. In fact, as much as these indictments roll out, um, it just helps him, right? It's, it's building a lot of sympathy on his side. His poll numbers go up. So, uh, you know, he, he looks dour and all this kind of stuff. He obviously doesn't have the fastball and the energy that he used to have. He gets up there in his rallies. He Instead of 90 minutes of, of kind of getting people excited and about disrupting and being an outsider like he did in 2016, he gets up and does 90 minutes of, of a droning, uh, a legal recital of, of the indictments and the woe is me. And it builds this sympathy. It's like it's like a sad Lenny Bruce, you know, repeating itself in 2023. But it builds all this sympathy. And there are there's no question, by the way, there's a lot of Democrats cheering this on because they completely see how this will play out. This allows him to gain sympathy, likely win the, the Republican nomination and, and get absolutely crushed in November of 24, because there's no independent, yeah. there's no undecided voter who's going to see all this and see all the drama, see the, 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 the soap opera that is Donald Trump life and say, oh, you know what, I, I've changed my mind. I'm back to that guy now. No, not a single one. So it really spells a lot of trouble for the Republican Party if he were to stay on top. All right, so look, you, you've been clear that Trump shouldn't be the GOP nominee, and, and you just said it there. And you know, when you said he's, the, and even by the way, I do think it's important, Governor. You pointed something out, which I hadn't mentioned and deserves mention. Um, fine, he's in a small room in Iowa. He's not at a big rally, so I give that caveat. But he does sound tired and dour and beaten down in what he just said, right? I mean, the tone, the yeah. tone. That's what it is. Um, but but here's the reality. This is the not new, the Donald Trump of 2016. No, no. I mean, certainly not not what we hear there. Brand new poll out of your state 
uh, shows exactly what you just said. He's got a wide lead, and it's getting bigger. 14 percentage point lead over Ron DeSantis in New Hampshire right now. Um, and DeSantis, though, downplayed concerns about his campaign. Uh, tries to say everything's doing fine. He had an exclusive interview with Jake Tapper. Let me play something he said, Governor. <laughs> this issue gets into the, the state of the race because some of your supporters are disappointed that your campaign has yet to catch fire the way they would want in terms of polling. Uh, one Republican pollster, one who is sympathetic to you, I was asking her about your campaign, and she said she thought the issue was you bumped up at the beginning because voters, Republican voters, saw you as a more electable conservative like Trump, like you, Trump without the baggage. But then they say as you go further and further to the right on some of these divisive social issues that could alienate moderates, suburban moms, et cetera, Republican voters see you as less and less electable. Uh, what do you say to that analysis? Well, I don't think it's true. I mean, the, the proof is in the pudding. I mean, I took a state that had been a one-point state, and we won it by 20 percentage points, 1.5 million votes. Uh, our bread and butter were people like suburban moms. Uh, we're leading a big movement for, for parents' rights, to have the parents be involved in education, school choice, get the indoctrination out of schools. Of course, there's bread and butter issues that matter, too. Inflation, uh, more economic opportunity. Florida's economy is ranked number one of all 50 states. We've worked hard uh, to make that happen. Crime, you see crime in all these different communities uh, that is now even going into suburbs in some areas. So I think that there's a lot of things. I don't think that's the reason. I think the reason is, is uh, I was getting a lot of media attention at the time coming off the victory. I had to do my job as governor with my legislative session, and we had a great legislative session. We did a lot of great things, actually things that are appeal to huge majorities of the, of the population. So I think that that analysis is wrong. Um, but I had to do that. And so I was basically taking fire uh, really nonstop since then because a lot of people view me as a threat. I think the left views me as a threat because they think I'll beat Biden and actually deliver on all this stuff. And then, of course, people that have their allegiances within the allegiances in the Republican side, you know, have gone after me. But the reality is this is a state by state process. I'm not running a campaign to try to juice, you know, whatever we are in the national polls. I mean, I, whatever we did in the CNN compared, whatever, it's fine. I'm definitely doing better than everybody else. But it's state else. by state, obviously. It's state by state. All right, Governor, I'm curious, um, and, and look, we're July 2023, so, so things can happen. You know, you can, you can cycle back through. So we don't know where this will end up. But where we are right now and where we've been the past few months is a Ron DeSantis who people thought was some sort of a shining star in the GOP and was going to surge didn't. And not only didn't he, it's gotten worse, at least at this point. What do you think it is that's turned voters off to him? Well, remember, nobody surged. Right. So it, it, it's more that that the Trump voters are uh, with all these indictments, as we were just discussing, all this sympathetic. He's garnering all the headlines and all these candidates are running against a former incumbent uh, Senate uh, a, a president. Right. So just naturally, there's if Trump wasn't garnering these headlines, if these indictments weren't happening, I'd have no I have no doubt that Ron DeSantis or other candidates would be surging. Uh, there'd be a bigger story around the other candidates. But Trump keeps garnering the headlines to uh, Ron Governor DeSantis's point while the mm -hmm. governor was, you know, having to be governor. You know, some of us do have 24 seven jobs still. So there is a lot of time here left. And, and I, I don't I think Jake asked, asked some really great tough head on questions. I think the governor gave some really clear answers in terms of you and can't say, well, he's going uh, you know, too far right if he won, won Florida by 20 points. Right. He does have the support of independents and, and Democrats, as do a lot of these other potential candidates. So um, I just think there's there's a lot to play. We haven't even seen him on a debate stage. Right. I keep going back to that. We're still a month away from the debate stage. And that's going to be really telling for all of them who can take a punch, who can give a punch, who's going to really stand up, who's going to push yeah. back on the on the former so, president and show where we're going forward as a country. And of course, we don't know whether the former president will be on that stage or not. I mean, obviously, he could be. It's whether he chooses to be. <laughs> Um, he, he's obviously made the requirements. You said you were going to endorse someone early and you were going to campaign for them. So what is that at this point? Are you going to wait till after that debate to see or not? No, well, I'll tell you, I'm, I'm campaigning with all, the, with all the candidates right now, actually. So they come up, they do kind of their retail stops. I'll go out, I'll see all of them. I'm spending time with them. Um, it, some of them are, are going doing multiple events with me a day, kind of seeing and, and helping them do good retail politics. I just think as with all of them in the race, if they do well here on a retail side, that's good for New Hampshire. It's good for the country. It's a good first filter. Okay. It's not about policy. It's about looking you in the eye and kind of buying off it on you as a person. And the rest of the country watches that. So we're going to be a, my, my myself and my whole team are going to be a big part of that uh, all the way through this fall. And then if there's a, a candidate that's really standing out, I got no problem standing behind him and and uh, and endorsing. All right. And, you know, but 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 obviously all the way through this fall until such a moment may occur. Governor, thanks so much. Always good to talk to you.
And, and after yeah. Governor Sununu just spoke here, let's go to Harry Enton, because Harry, um, here's the reality. And I know uh, Governor Sununu is saying, well, nobody surged. Um, yeah. And that's true. Um, I will say, if you look at state by state, you do see Chris Christie certainly in New Hampshire, right? I mean, there's some, there some. But his point does hold. Um, however, in the case of DeSantis, people expected a lot. Yes. They didn't expect anything from those other guys. Correct. Okay? Uh, or from Nikki Haley. They didn't expect as much. DeSantis people expected a lot. He has not delivered in the polls at this point. What's up? Yeah, I think that if you look underneath the hood, there is a big problem for the Florida governor. Look at his very favorable ratings. This historically has translated to support at the ballot box. And what we see is his very favorable ratings among Republicans have dropped by about 15 points since mm. the beginning of the year. So yes, Trump might have come up in the polls a little bit. No one really surged who wasn't a Donald Trump candidate. But the fact is, if you look underneath the hood, I think there's real problems for DeSantis.